my lovely learners. Welcome to Bloom and Grow Education. My name is Merida. Today's writing lesson is suitable for year five students who are preparing for the Gifted and Talented test. It is in the series, Some Risks Are Worth It, and it's around the stimulus here. It's another one of those writing ones where I look at the student's work and review it and tell you what the students done really well and areas that they can improve. This is one of those ones where the student has done a fantastic job. There's very minor little nitpicky things to improve on, but he has uh, his vocabulary and the idea in this story is really nice. Um, so let's let's have a look at it. Who am I? Splash, crash, whoa. I tried saying, but only bubbles came out. I stared around at my surroundings. Colorful coral with diminutive holes. Diminutive means unusually small. Stood at the oozy sand floor. The precious scales of the passing fish glittered in the sunlight. My vision was midnight blue as I leapt out of the waves uncontrollably. For a moment, I thought I was a dolphin. Then I saw... Zing, slap. For mere seconds, I stared, mouth ajar, as the glowing lava-like scales were submerged once again in ice-cold water. Of course, this was it. It explained why I opened my eyes in the water, why I have bubbles departing from my mouth every time I speak, why I had a magnificent bronze-orange scales. I was a goldfish, realizing it was a mistake. A voice erupted from my mind. It was as though a white hot knife had been jabbed into the back of my head. Pain was replacing my blood. Memories were flushing in my mind. Then out of the blue, I saw a hand scoop me up and throw me back into the ocean with immense force. It's where you belong, the voice said as it faded away into the ocean. I knew what I had to do. I started to push myself into the abyss of the abyss of the ocean. The risk was a new friend of mine. Every single muscle in my poor diminutive body had left me in their dust. I felt as though it was finally time to perish. I merely blinked when all of a sudden a current swooped in, taking me with it. I knew there was no escape. Bang! A cold stone wall stood in front of me. There was only one way to win. I swam back a couple of meters, then sped full throttle towards the wall. Zip! I was over it. I was over the wall. Splash! I landed in the water on the other side. That's when my friend and I decided his risk was worth it. Okay, let's have a chat about what this student has done really well. So here's the vocabulary is obviously amazing. So in preparation for this lesson, I gave him a vocabulary developing activity, which is the, the one that I've already previously provided to you, where we look at the Tim Winton story blueback and we pull out some of that vocabulary. That's I've provided that lesson for you. It's uh, in the description box below, so you can check that out by clicking on the link. But you can see some of that um, the vocabulary coming through here, and that's beautiful. Um, the the onomatopoeia and the splash, crash, sing, slap is great. He loves the word diminutive. He writes that pretty much every time. Uh, it's a great word. Um, precious scales of passing fish glittered. The magnificent bronze orange scales. I really like a voice erupted from my mind. It was as though a white hot knife had been jabbed into the back of my head. Pain was replacing my blood. Memories were flashing in my mind. The way that that, that pain is described is really lovely. The use of the word abyss here, beautiful. His paragraphing is good. He's got his, um, his title at the top. Um, the story arc is good. So introduction, build up, problem in here, resolution, and then going on to conclusion. So one of the areas that this student could improve is that although it's got the flow of the story arc, there's there are some confusing points within it. And the confusing points are particularly towards the end. So this introduction is lovely. He's having a lovely swim in the ocean. And I sort of feel like 
this part in here when he explains that he's a goldfish, it wasn't, it's an unnecessary paragraph. Um, he could have built some of these sentences into his introduction in order to show that he's a goldfish, but he's spent valuable time explaining that he's a goldfish, which he could have used in other parts of his story. So I would have added to this introduction up here simply my magnificent bronze orange scales um, were glowing lava-like as I swam past the luminous coral or something like that. It doesn't it doesn't really matter that he's a goldfish. He just needs you just need to establish that he's a fish. And in some ways I find that part where he's saying that he's a goldfish a bit confusing because you don't usually get goldfish in the ocean. You usually get them in like a backyard pond or a home pond, like a home fish tank. Um so Taking that, just taking one that one sentence about describing he's a gold fish, a fish that is gold, and putting it into that into that introduction would have saved him that valuable time of that second paragraph, which when you've only got 25 minutes to write, you have to use your time really preciously. So then we get down here into the problem. I realize my mistake, which I'm not really sure exactly how that flows in from here. I assume what he's saying is that he had gone into the air, which had meant he had gotten caught. So he gets caught. So I assume that the white hot knife is the hook and that he gets pulled out of the water. The fisherman goes, oh, no, don't want you, and throws him back. And then now he's back in the ocean. So problem solved. But And then I think what the author is trying to say is that he's had such a fright from this experience that he wants to swim away. So he's discovered that being on the surface up and up, being on the surface of the ocean is a dangerous place to be. So the problem is that the surface of the ocean is dangerous and we need, he needs to swim away and get far into the depths of the nice safe ocean to push myself into the abyss of the ocean. The risk was a new friend of mine. And so he swims and swims and swims and swims into a cold stone wall in front of him. There was only one way to win. He had to jump over it. And I'm confused because why is there this stone wall in the middle of the ocean? And I think what has happened here? So one of the problems here is that I'm saying, I think this is what's happening. I'm assuming this is what the writer is saying. And we can't have any of that. It needs to be perfectly clear exactly what's happening. And I think that there's been a breakdown in the planning process where he hasn't gathered his ideas clearly enough. And he's it's all, it's almost as if he has he's written the problem he gets caught and has gone oh i need to solve this problem and he gets thrown back into the ocean i've got 10 minutes writing time okay i'd better swim away mm, i've still got 5 minutes of writing time i'd better have him jump into it bump into a wall and the the, the flow of the ideas doesn't make sense so how could we fix this is the is the important question. So what I'm thinking is, remembering that from before I suggested we take it out, out this second paragraph so that we've got more, more time. So we're going to take out this paragraph here and then we're going to, and um, we're going to come down into here. So he's raced off into the abyss of the ocean and bang, a stone, a cold stone wall is in front of me. Well, why is there a wall in the middle of the ocean? So maybe another alternative would be to come up against something else that's dangerous um, and have like a sadly ever after. So you could, maybe he bangs into the giant tooth of a great white shark and gets gobbled up. And as he's sailing down the passage of his, the shark's esophagus down to his stomach, he realizes that no matter where you are, there's nothing safe. He's not safe on the surface. He's not safe in the ocean. It's 
is just not safe. Or maybe he realizes that some risks are not worth it. Um, So coming up against some other kind of danger, maybe instead of getting caught by a fishing hook, this time he gets caught by the the net of like a one of those huge salmon trawlers who have those huge nets and they scoop up all the salmon and he's gotten caught up in that. So some other more realistic danger than a wall in the middle of the ocean uh, that can lead to some kind of sadly ever after um, because then that's a little bit more of a shock because you expect a happily ever after. You expect him to get to safety yeah and then when you get this oh actually he's dead now um it just shows your ability as a writer to to be able to think uniquely think creatively think outside the box which is what we're trying to do here in the gates test okay That brings me to the end of the lesson. Thank you very much for joining me. And I'd love it if you could please thank me in return by liking this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. And also check out the other lessons in this series. It's called Some Risks Are Worth It. And I'll see you at the next lesson.